Good morning, Ignite. We are so happy to have you here this morning with joining us. Will you stand with a prayer with us before we begin our worship this morning? Dear Heavenly Father, we are just so thankful to be here with you today. Let us come together and worship you and hear the music and the message that is brought to us today. And let us touch our hearts and our minds. We love you and we praise you and we thank you. And in your name we pray. Amen. I believe one is you can see things look like this much different up here we're gonna slowly start adding instruments back in so we're really excited for that um, so we can get a little bit of a fuller sound up here we wanted to get used to singing with each other and I think we've accomplished that so we can check that off and start adding our instruments back so we're excited for Michael to be playing bass with us this morning so he's like doing both he's like oh, I have to sing now because he's playing too so we're getting used to that 
Um, a few announcements from the bulletin this morning is save your pop tabs. You can put those at the welcome desk. All proceeds will go to Ronald McDonald House. Um, Friday evening, which Jim told me this morning is at 7. I hope I'm right on that. I did not write it down. Friday evening at 7, March 10th, there will be a tuba, tuba recital by Clay Pennington here at Central Trinity. Um, it's free and open to the public. Clay is a Zanesville High School graduate and music education ma major at Harding University. So if you would like to come see a tuba recital, I believe there'll be some other guests there as well. So you can come and join us Friday evening at March 10th. Um, I believe that's all. There's one that says, don't forget to set your clocks ahead one hour Saturday night for daylight savings time because that would suck. I'm talking to you guys, all right? Don't be late. <laughs> all right, we're gonna move on to our next song. We're so happy to have you here this morning. I am 
X-Men up, and I will say you missed quite a sight this morning. He was dancing around the sanctuary while we were practicing, so you missed on something there. You missed, missed my booty shaking this morning, so uh, this booty don't shake very much, but uh, they were singing very well this morning, and I enjoyed listening to them. Plus, it was also very funny because when I came in, Caitlin was trying to hear the sound, and so she was sitting out about where Ram and Bev are, and she was leaning against the pew, and she was singing just like this, and then they were up here singing. <laughs> and I, I just said it was really funny because I said I should just come in. and like, I'm going to preach like this today. Oh, that's what she looked like. <laughs> I made you red. You said you never get embarrassed. I'm not. <laughs> Well, we have a lot of fun in here, and we hope you guys have fun, too. We're, we look forward to this service and uh, getting you guys involved. And so, uh, you know, don't forget, this is the kind of service where you can just be yourself and, and relax and let your hair down and, and be you. So uh, don't worry about that. And we, uh, we're, we're glad to have everybody here this morning. Um, if you'll bow your heads with me, we'll say a prayer, and uh, we'll sing another song. Father, we're so grateful that we can be here and share today together in your word and hear some um, some scripture and uh, sing some songs and have communion together. And we just ask, Father, that you bless and watch over each of us in all things that we have to do. And we give you the praise and the glory because we know that you are the I Am. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. The last few weeks, we've been bringing uh, you a few new songs we've been trying to add to our repertoire list. The next song isn't brand new. We have not done it here at Ignite yet. It is called, a, it's called Rise Up, parentheses, Lazarus, parentheses. So, but I just call it Rise Up Like Lazarus. <laughs> so it's by the same band who um, we just did, I'm so blessed, hallelujah, I'm blessed. It's by that same exact band called Cain. Um, so in this uh, song, it kind of discusses Lazarus' story and how Jesus rolled away the stone and Lazarus rose from the dead and kind of you can use that stone as a symbolism for me at least kind of like our lives sometimes things get in the way sometimes we're in our darkest places in our life um, and that stone a wall is just kind of in the way of us getting into our closer faith to Jesus so while you listen to this song I want you to think about the things maybe that you're struggling in your faith or in your life and try to grow closer to God and Jesus when you listen to this scared to move and walk out of this tomb buried underneath the lies that you believe safe and sound stuck in the ground too lost to be found you're just asleep and it's time to leave come on and rise up take a breath you're alive now can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us out from the grave like Lazarus? Your brand new power of death couldn't hold you. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us out from the grave like Lazarus? up, rise up, rise up, out from the grave like Lazarus. He said your name, the thing that filled your veins was more than blood, it's the kind of love that washes sin away. Now the door is open wide, the stone's been rolled aside, the old is gone, the light has come. Come on and rise up, take a breath, you're alive now. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us? Out from the grave like Lazarus, your brand new power of death couldn't hold you. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us? Out from the grave like Lazarus, rise up, rise up, rise up. Out from the grave like Lazarus, He's calling us to walk out of the dark. 
He's given us new resurrected hearts. He's calling us to walk out of the dark. He's given us new resurrected hearts. Come on and then rise up. Take a breath, you're alive now. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us? Out from the grave like Lazarus, your brand new power of death couldn't hold you. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us? Out from the grave like Lazarus. Rise up, rise up. Out from the grave like Lazarus. Rise up, rise up. Rise up, out from the grave like Lazarus. Dear Heavenly Father, just bless our time of listening and let these words we hear guide us for our time of head. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you. And in your name we pray, God. Amen. You may be seated. That was great. Thank you, guys. I really enjoyed that one. Who who sings that one, then? Cain. That's right. That's what the other group was. That was what your other song was that you were over. Is that with a C or a K? C? Okay. So, like, Biblical King. Not like Undertaker King. That's wrestling, so. <laughs> uh, actually, you know what? You want to know an interesting fact? I see here. Uh, this I can get started really quickly. But uh, did anyone know this? That in fact, he just re re upped himself. Did if you've ever watched wrestling, the Big Red Machine or Kane or whatever you want to call him, uh, the Undertaker's brother. Did you know that he is the mayor of a small town in Tennessee? Anybody know that? Yeah, Jeremy did. Cody did. Uh, and he's uh, you can look him up, Glenn Jacobs. He is the actual mayor. So how interesting would that be if you're walking around town and uh, to some of their big events, he dresses up as king and is the mayor. That would be very interesting. Uh, and strangely enough, uh, I was just talking about with Jeremy this morning, uh, the undertaker is now a full-fledged uh, minister, too. So you have a mayor <laughs> and a minister. Imagine the undertaker is your preacher. That would be scary. Let him preach a sermon on heaven and hell, and you would pay attention. Uh, I've heard and saw him on the Internet. He's a very good speaker. So side note, ADD. <coughs> Got to get rid of that. Okay. Moving into the other things here this morning. Uh, we are talking about the I am. And last week, I kind of started to give you an introduction to the I am of what it means. And I'll give you just a little short recap if you weren't here or if you need a refresher because sometimes during the week it's hard to remember what your name is, what you ate for breakfast, let alone what the preacher said last Sunday. Uh, so uh, an explanation of I am and a really good one is just the Jewish word Yahweh. And that's us changing that because remember it's actually just sounds yah wa ha la and uh so this is that covenant name that god of israel gave to moses when he encountered the burning bush and moses said who are you you know that's speaking to me here and that's in exodus three fourteen, and god said i am but to moses because they can't say the lord's name it comes out like sounds all right. And in fact, the way we've changed that in the English language, and if you really want to know when that version of uh, God is being used in the Bible, it's uh, any anywhere in the Bible that you see L, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. When it's all capitalized, that is the Jewish version, Yahweh, meaning God, the omnipotent. I am what I am or I will be what I will be, or perhaps even I create what I create. 
Those are the different versions that you can get off of that. And so it's the name that God gave himself to Moses. It does not need any, he doesn't need anyone or anything. He possesses all possible relationships to him. Uh, so anything that exists or any social relationship related to God, he is God. We talked last week, too, about the Trinity and all those things that exist has been created by him for his own glory. Uh, I shared and even said, you know, a good way of thinking about it is, uh, and, you know, this goes on the Wayback Machine. We're talking about uh, old wrestlers, talking about uh, the Cannonball Run. Anybody remember those movies? Uh, I mean, some of you ladies in here, I know that you loved Burt Reynolds and the stash and whatever. I don't know. Uh Katie, was that you? No? Where's Where's Lori, Jeremy, when I need her? She's the one I pick on for that kind of stuff. She, I guarantee you she was either Tom Selleck or uh, Burt Reynolds, one or the other. <laughs> They're saying no. Uh, but she married you, see. So, uh, <coughs> But you got Burt Reynolds in that Cannonball Run movie, and his sidekick always was the comedian Dom DeLuise, and he was just a goofy kind of guy, a uh, very interesting fella. But he created a superhero, and if you remember... He called him him. Him is coming. Him is here. You have to go look that up. And that's really what God's talking about because it was him because they had this whole conversation once and they said, him, how do you spell that? And he said, H-I-M. And he said, is there capitals in that? And he said, there's capitals everywhere, uh, J.J. So he wanted him to know that him was an important thing. And the most important name for God is that I am. And the translation of it, then, is therefore the most important thing. So for us, that Y-H-W-H, Yahweh, is so important because we're not Hebrew, and we can't understand not being able to say the Lord, Lord, Lord God, yes, Lord. All those things, when they were saying it, it came out as a breath. And that's why there was so much power in that. In fact, many biblical scholars believe that that is why the fear of God came about. That doesn't mean that you were literally afraid of God, but it just meant that you were fearful of what he could do. So you knew that when he said something to you or meant something for you, that it was in stone. That's the way that it was supposed to be. Why? Because it was Lord. Eventually, what they came to do is, they did what we all do, is they couldn't always just say that breathy sound because it sounded weird. So they pronounced this word and came up with Adonai. And it means my Lord because they can't say Lord. So it's my Lord. Uh, and the English versions of this have basically translated and followed the same way they take the proper name of Yahweh but it has Lord in all capitals but God is really Yahweh you have to understand Yahweh in order to understand I am for them it was def definite it was definitive it was God saying once again I am God, you are not. I am Yahweh, you are not. I am the one whose name you cannot say. I am the one who took Moses and put him in the crack in the mountain and said, my glory is so great that you can only see me as I go past, not as I am. And so when he says, I am what I am, that's the power that comes from that. There's another word that originated, and again, it's an attempt by the people to try to figure out how to say this powerful word that they can't say because they feel like if they say it, they'll be struck dead. And so another one that came besides that and I is Jehovah. And Jehovah originated from an attempt to pronounce those consonants, Yahweh, with some vowels in between. And that's where they got Adonai. And so they just left it at Jehovah, Adonai, all those things. And in the oldest Hebrew text, though, there are no vowels. Imagine that, reading. Imagine your name with no vowels. You know, if, if I was uh, John, it would just be Jin. You know, that's weird, we would think. But that's how it was for them. 
And so this meaning of Yahweh that occurs in Exodus 3 for Moses, and he's there at the burning bush, and then he says later on in verse 13, if I come to the people of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say, well, who is this? What is his name? What shall I then say to them? Because I can't say your name. And God said, I am who I am. Say this to the people. I am has sent me to you. And that's what Moses did. And that's what brings us to where we are then in the New Testament. Christ himself then is declaring to be the I am. For them, imagine the confusion because all this time it's been passed down historically, biblically, uh, spiritually, emotionally, all these things. Uh, parents, grandparents, teachers of the law, rabbis have taught their children, you cannot say God's name. His name is Yahweh. He is Jehovah. He is Adonai. He is the King of Kings. You must go through uh, the priests to get to God. But here, Christ came, born among us, walked among us, was a part of us. He himself, just a lowly carpenter's son. And now he's standing before them at 30 years of age and saying, I am. See, we don't often think all we do is we have hindsight you know and they say hindsight is more valuable because we can look back and see oh well that's what was meant and so it's easy for us to be able to say oh i see jesus was the messiah and so he was trying to say these things to them but to them all these historical years that had gone through again and again and again and they were told don't say the name of the lord that's why the name of the Lord is such a high curse in biblical terms, because they couldn't even say it in spiritual realms, let alone if they curse God. And so then here, all these years later, these young people who have grown up hearing, don't say God, say Yahweh. Don't say any of those things. Say Adonai, say Jehovah. But don't ever say the Lord. And then here is this person standing before them saying, I am the great I am. Imagine that. And in John 8, he maintains that he tells the truth. And he supports this by claiming that he is saying what he has heard, seen, and been taught by the Father. And he can co corroborate with God at any time that he wants to. And he concludes his argument by using the expression, I am, in these verses in chapter 8. The Jews realized when he said, before Abraham was, I am, that this was a claim to deity. Now, I'm sure before that time, many had tried to claim deity because the Messiah was a big thing, right? And the Messiah was supposed to be there to come to draw the people out of uh, Egypt and to give them a home in the new land and all these things. And that had happened. So some thought that Moses had been. Then remember what had happened. Moses got to the beginning there of Cana and he was not allowed to come in because of the things that he had done. And so Joshua took over. Joshua did the battle of Jericho, you know, right? The trumpet sound, the walls fall down and Jericho is defeated. And they move through Jericho into the land of Canaan, to the land of milk and honey. But again, of course, things aren't always right. People want what they can't have. And they can't have sometimes what they think they want. And so all these things have been happening historically throughout the years. And probably what happened is that they forgot that before Abraham, there was Moses. And Moses had been taught... Uh, before Abraham was, Jesus is saying, I am. And he was claiming deity. And so that's why I shared last week, they took up the stones to kill him. Because he was identifying himself. They realized with the, I am that I am. Well, there's all these other expressions of I am that Jesus uses. And the one we're talking about this morning 
is I am the bread of life. And it's John 6, 30 through 35, and then also the last few verses of the chapter, 47 through 51. So if you want to put it up on the screen. Thank you. So they asked him, what sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. You can go to the next one. Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So he's giving them this view. We'll stop there for a second, then we'll do the end in just a moment. And he's saying to them something really important. And what's happened here is that they're uh, discussing and they're talking about the bread <coughs> that they received when they were starving and in the wilderness and God rained down manna from heaven. And there was such joy, remember, because they hadn't eaten. And then the water came from the rock. And all these things happened. And the people were reminded of this again and again. And they were like, wow, how wonderful that was. And then they were like, so who are you? What sign will you give that here we all are gathered in this place? Are you going to give us manna from heaven? You know, who are you saying that you're God or that you're greater than God? Then how will we know? Our ancestors ate that manna in the wilderness, and they said, the Bible says he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus says, you have to remember this. It wasn't Moses that gave you the bread, but it was my Father, the Lord, who gives you the true bread. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, give us this bread, always, they said. And again, Jesus said to them, you see now why he keeps repeating it. You don't understand. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never grow hungry. Jesus is trying to <coughs> correct their misunderstanding about the source of the manna. It's not Moses, but God who was now among them, giving them the true bread. It wasn't Moses who was holding his staff to heaven and saying, Lord God of Israel, of Isaac, of Jacob, of all these people, rain down this bread of manna on, he on us so that we might live and be able to keep alive by eating this gift from you. But now... <coughs> That doesn't need to happen because in Moses' place is Jesus, and he is saying, I am that I am that you prayed for. So you don't have to look to the heavens and pray. You can look to me, and I will give you this bread. And their response is, yes, give us this bread always because they still don't get it. It'd be like, uh, you know, if you go to the store and you find this special bread that you love and it's really your favorite and you and your family eat it all the time and then all of a sudden you go to the store and you find out that that company doesn't exist anymore and they're not going to make that bread and there's no more bread. There's just other kinds of bread that you don't like. And then you're like, well, where's the bread that I like? And they're like, well, this bread is just as good. But I want the bread that I like. And then Jesus is trying to tell them, you want what you think you want because you don't realize what you have. I'm standing right here. Do you understand sometimes why we have even different quotes and things in movies? I think it's because God wants to draw us in from books, movies, Whatever it is that we do, television shows, our job, our daily things, you know. I don't remember the movie, but it's the, 
you know, I'm just a girl standing here in front of a boy wishing that he would love me. Jesus is basically saying that, only he's saying, I'm not a girl, but I'm God, and I am the God, and I'm just standing here saying, why can't you understand who I am? All these things in life see are connected, and they're all drawn together through God so that you'll understand. And if you understand that version, there's someone else that's going to understand another version. They're going to understand, you know, when Billy Graham uh, was reaching the end of his life and he was in his mid-90s and he had preached what they thought would be close to his last sermon. And people said, well, that'll probably be Billy's last sermon. And uh, Franklin then went to his bedside and told it to him. And he said, tell those that say that it's Billy's last sermon that there will never be a last sermon of Billy Graham because even when I die... I will live. They didn't get it. People even then said, well, that's sweet. He thinks that he'll just preach when he gets to heaven. You know why? They don't understand that that's what it's all about, see? It's not about what's here. It's about what we learn from while we're here until we get to where we're supposed to be. And the scary part is, is that so many of us get fearful and afraid because they think that where we're supposed to be is going to be a terrifying kind of thing. Because there are false prophets, false teachers that try to say, well, this is what heaven is like. And what they really should say is, why don't you look at your Bible and pray to God what you want heaven to be like? And instead, what we say is we say all these things then and it terrifies, terrifies young people. They had discussions about it. Others say things about it. And they then have nightmares because they think, well, why would I want to die and not be with my family that's not what the bible's saying if you think that's what it's saying then you're not reading it right it's saying that we're all family doesn't mean that you won't be with your family and so this idea of bread of life and whoever comes to me will never go hungry whoever believes in me will never be thirsty they don't get it they just think ah this is great it's going to be just like on the mountain when the manna fell from heaven every day and the water flowed i didn't have to do anything for that it just came and was provided no false you still have to believe and jesus is saying in order for you to get what you need and to get what you uh should have from me you have to know who i am and i am everything And so he closes out these verses there and says in verse 47, if you want to put them up on the screen, Ethan. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die, because I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. And we know what that means. We're about to do it here in a few moments. This is my flesh that I give to you for the world. This is my blood that I pour out for you so that you can have forgiveness of sins. And if you take and eat from my bread and my juice, you will never be hungry again. Well, that would save you a lot on food, wouldn't it? You wouldn't need it. But that's not what it means. Thank goodness, right? Because when you're paying $5 for a dozen eggs, you know, you don't. who knows what Wonder Bread and Wonder Juice would be that had the body and the blood of Christ. Well, you don't have to know it because you have it. All you have to know is that when it happens and when we have it and when we pray for it, that it is straight from God and God says, I am am and it's emphatic it is an emphatic i am you better understand it because if not then you're going to be left behind in john 6 34 be reminded again what i just read 
the people say, Sir, give us this bread. This is the same kind of request that the Samaritan woman gave at the well to Jesus when she said, Sir, I want some of that living water. And what does that tell us? Those are two stories, two requests. Spiritual awakening begins with a request for God's gift. The people in Asbury, the people that are doing the uh, revival all over the United States now, it's a request that they gave to God by saying, come, Holy Spirit, and be a part of where we are. And you know what God said? It's the same thing that he says over and over and over again. I am, or in other words, I already was here. But yeah, I'll be there. Don't you get it? That's what he's trying to say. He's trying to say to us, you want to see and go to revival. And we did. We went to the revival. Some of us did because we were just went there to show it, to bring it back. But when we came here ultimately and we said we, we would want to have revival in this church, in this community, in this part of Ohio, then God says, yeah, like, well, I've already been here. You could have done it any time. That was a terrible Valley Girl imitation. I need to work on that one in the mirror maybe for a while. What about <laughs> That's a little better. That's basically what God is saying. He's saying to you, oh, my goodness, how dense and dumb can you be? I'm trying to tell you I am here. And here's a, here's a little reference reference for you if you watch the Disney movies. Horton, here's a who. We get that one in our house because Sammy Jackson, they both still love that one even though they're getting older. And you remember what the little who's were? They were in the little speck, and the little speck was on a little flower. And Horton, the elephant, realizes that there's this whole other place on this little speck that's on this little flower that's floating through the universe. And if you remember the story, at the very end, in order to be heard, they had to chant something. And they started chanting it so that the whole world could hear it so that they wouldn't get drowned or they wouldn't get ripped apart or whatever it was that they were going to do. And what they were chanting was something that was very important. They were saying, we are here. We are here. And that's what we need to do. God is saying to us, I am the bread of life who are you? You are nothing without me. You call and you ask upon me to come and be a part of you and a part of where you are. And I say it again and I'll say it again and again and again. I'm already there. I never left. So when we come and share in moments like this, in moments of Holy Communion, and when we look at this bread, or this bread that you're about to receive, we know that it has been broken. It's been broken by the great I am who says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats from me will live eternally. Now the sermon was, I am the bread of life. So this is just a freebie. I am also... The blood poured out for you and for many. You get a two for one today. You should feel good because you get to stand here and have the body of Christ and the blood of Christ. And each of it was done just for you and just for me. I say the same things that I always say. That here at Central Trinity... Anyone can come to the front for communion. All we ask is that you just believe. And this morning we ask that you believe with a request. A request for God's gift so that our awakening can occur. It's time, folks. We know that it's going to happen there were periods in history that we tried to call it the Great Awakening, but it's not it, and this is it. It's the moment that you've been waiting for. Will it take 100 years, 200 years, 1,000? I don't know, 
but it's begun. The clock is ticking, and the great I am says, I am the bread of life, and if you really want to know me and love me, then come to me. Why? Because I am already here. I am here. Can you bow your heads with me? Gracious Father, we come before you this morning. We give this bread and juice to you so that it might be your body and your blood so that we know who the I am is. We know what that bread of life feels like. We now know, Father, that we can look and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, my Lord, my God. And so we give these things to you this morning, and we thank you, Father, that you are the bread of life. That when we eat, we come to know the Lord because no one can come to him except through you. And I give that this morning, Father. I give each of us here and each of this moment that's going to be present in these next few moments that as we share in communion together, may it be a time that each of us look inside our hearts, make a commitment, make it a spiritual awakening, a chance to happen by saying, Father, we request you in this place. And you'll get the response that you should get, which is, I am, meaning I was already there. But I'll be there. I won't forget you. I won't forsake you. I'll always love you. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. They're going to sing softly, and as they sing, um, Jeremy, would you help? I don't see anybody else in here. Uh, just send 10 or so forward at a time. You can start from the back, that's fine. And if, whichever way you are, if you could come down through the middle, if it's possible, if you can walk that far. If not, you can come the other way. And then you can go back to the sides. So uh, just follow along and listen. When you come to the front, uh, we'll share in communion together. Could not keep him from rising up. 
trumpet will sound for his coming. One day the sky is filled, his glories will shine. Wonderful day, my beloved one bringing. Hallelujah, Savior, Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Glorious day. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far. so we can have a revival in our soul, in our life, in ourself, God. We love you and we praise you and we thank you. Amen. We're going to sing one more song with you before you head out for the week. with his redeeming blood. 
glorious day. You called my name, and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness, into your glorious day. Take the word that you've heard today and start a revival in your soul. We hope you have a great week, guys. See you next week.